Let's do it. I've done quite a bit of testing on AC on this prime weld machine. Now it's time to switch gears and do a little testing on DC. And we're going to do a little pedal pumping on 4130 chromoly. So we're going to throw on a Furic Ceramic 12 cup. We'll bump the argon flow up to about 30 CFH. Sharpen the 332 2% lanthanated tungsten to around 30 degree taper. And we're ready to go. We'll take a look at all the settings that we use, the amperage and all that, just a little bit later in the video. This is a practice kit from my friend Joel over at OverkillRacingAndChassis.com. Let's take a look at the first pass. We're going to do two passes here, and we're going to do pedal pumping or pulsing with the pedal on each pass. A lot of folks just use a straight current for the root pass, but we're going to pedal pump today just to get more practice and to see how responsive this foot pedal is. For best results, you need a foot pedal that is responsive when you're pedal pumping. Brad Goodman is doing the welding here today. He pumps the pedal a lot on things like aluminum dog boxes, but also on chromoly and stainless. Watching Brad's foot here, you can see that he is just not using the full range of the pedal. He's not romping it all the way to the floor. He's just kind of flow that metal and backs off while he steps ahead. And it's one method of heat control. We're going to come over this with a second pass, but first let's take a look at the settings for the first pass. If we were just using straight current without pumping the pedal or without pulsing, we'd only need about 120 amps for this first pass. But pumping the pedal requires more amperage. There's a lot of knobs on this thing, but it's really very simple. Let's just quickly go over them. Set start current to zero just to keep things simple. Upslope set to zero when you're using a foot pedal. The next knob on here is the main amperage setting. We already talked about how we need more amperage when we're either pulsing or pumping the foot pedal. Downslope also set to zero when you got the foot pedal hooked up. And the last knob on this line is the 2T, 4T selection, and you want 2T when you got the foot pedal hooked up. 10 seconds is a pretty good all around setting for post flow. That depends on the type of metal you're welding and the size of electrode and amperage that you're using. Post flow is how long the argon continues to flow after you terminate the arc. Now let's run another bead here. Like I said before, a lot of guys that do this kind of work will just use straight current without pumping the pedal. They'll use a small wire and just burn that first pass in nice and smooth. But we're just pumping the pedal on both passes, mainly just to have more opportunity to show it and show the technique because that's what the video is about, is about pumping the pedal. Well, that should be enough for the first pass. We're not going to weld this whole thing out because everything starts to look the same. But let's do the second pass. I showed earlier that we set the post flow on 10 seconds and that is how long the argon continues to flow but sometimes 10 seconds isn't long enough and you can just bump the pedal and kind of recycle the timer and get an extra 10 seconds which is something that I routinely do on titanium just to get plenty of post flow this doesn't really need it but it's going to make a lot better start if the area where we restart is perfectly shielded and speaking of a restart, let's just show one here. Let's show Brad lighting up and then kind of backing in to that crater and then just motoring on like nothing ever happened. That's the cool thing about TIG welding is it's a lot easier to make a restart that you can't tell as opposed to, let's say, stick or MIG. Here's a little something you got to watch out for when you're pedal pumping. You can easily get a cable hung up underneath the heel and won't let it all the way down. That's just using a foot pedal, period. That happens to me a lot. Gotta watch out for it, do a little cable management. For this video, we didn't go to the trouble of welding down in those tight angles, but with a long, long stick out on a cup like this, where you still get good shielding, it makes that little task a whole lot easier. You can see everything really well, while at the same time giving you a really big shield of argon gas, which makes it really easy to keep that hot tip of the filler wire shielded with argon, which helps a little bit with chromoly and stainless steel, especially stainless steel. Brad's got a little shake, a little shimmy going on here. I'll tell you what, some of the best welders that I've ever known have a little shake, a little built-in shake, and they just stay the course and things turn out okay. One more thing. When you're doing chromoly or lots of alloys, you need to taper off nice and slowly. Taper that amperage off so that you don't leave 
crater hole or fish eye that might turn into a crack. Some alloys are extremely sensitive to that if you taper off too quickly. And a lot of it depends on the thickness, but it's always a good practice on anything that might crack. You might leave a, a crater eye in, taper off nice and slow. I want to take a minute and show you some of the changes we've made to one of our most popular TIG kits. We're trying to add value without adding cost. It's the Weldmonger Furic Arsenal kit, a very popular kit. This one is showing the, the one for 17, 18, and 26 style torches. We also have them for 920 style torches. Let's take a quick look at the old version. It's Furic cups, starting with the 8 and going all the way up to the BBW, the 8, 10, to 12 ceramic, and the BBW. But what we've done is we've added a 4 through 8 standard ceramic cup to make this kit even more useful for most every situation. The large furic cups are, are great for stainless, inconel, titanium, but sometimes you don't need all that gas and you don't want to use all that gas if it's a Sunday afternoon and the welding stores are closed. So we, we're, we got you covered here going all the way down to a number four cup. This 332nd furic gas lens works with all these cups. So let's take a look at swapping out the normal hardware, the stuff that comes with most torches, with the furic arsenal kit hardware. One benefit that you notice right away is it just shrinks the overall size of the torch. It just kind of makes it more maneuverable, makes it be able to reach into tighter spots. And the clear cup that comes with it, the number eight cup, really lights things up. I started using clear cups strictly to film. I was kind of skeptical, but I, I saw right away they really helped me see better. The number eight clear cup is good for AC and DC. This is a little plate with a bead on plate here with I've, I've scribed lines about an eighth of an inch apart just so you can see the detail. See how well this cup lights things up. It really helps. The ceramic Jazzy 10 is a DC cup. Great for stainless steel, chromoly, carbon steel, tool steel, even some light titanium work. This is some 4130 chromoly and this is the second pass. I'm doing a little pedal pumping here. But another benefit of a cup like this is if you get a really good shielded first pass, the second pass just goes in a whole lot better. If you need a little bit more shielding with a little longer stick out, the Ceramic 12 is a good choice. Here's some stainless steel 120 wall tubing. With stainless steel, just a little tip, you want to get that puddle started quickly, get moving quickly to kind of outrun the heat. You don't always just want to weld with less amperage. Sometimes hotter and faster is better. The clear BBW is a great cup for titanium. The bigger the cup, generally speaking, the more gas flow it requires. And this one might require as much as 35 or 40 CFH, but when you're welding titanium, the little extra argon is just cost of doing business. It's, it's necessary. It comes with the long cap, the medium cap, and the short button cap. Now, where would you want to use these cups? Well, again, if it's a Sunday afternoon and your your your, your tank is down to about two or three hundred, and you got a job you need to get out, and it, the job doesn't really require super excellent shielding, a four or a five cup makes sense. It also makes sense for flash tacking. You don't waste a lot of gas while you're just doing a, a little quick burst tack on some sheet metal corner joints. There's a purpose for every cup. You know, one size does not fit all. The number five cup is great for aluminum butt joints, can actually help with penetration by limiting that cleaning action and kind of focusing the energy on the puddle. Another reason to have a good assortment of cups is sometimes you might get into a situation like this where you're walking the cup on a small fillet weld. You don't want to use a whole bunch of extra gas. It doesn't require it. When you've got that cup right up, right up against the metal like that, it requires a little bit less gas flow than it does if you've got a long stick out and, and freehand in it. A number six is also a really good all-around cup for aluminum. This is an outside corner joint on eighth inch thick material. If you need a little longer stick out than you can get with the six, take it up to a number seven, just increase the argon flow. About two and a half CFH per cup size gets you right in the ballpark, usually. And then there's the number eight, which is kind of a really good all-around cup for stainless and chromoly and carbon steel. This little demonstration really shows the difference between the standard hardware that comes with a TIG torch 
as opposed to a stubby gas lens. I'm using the same long stick out here. It's a half inch stick out. I'm going to use the same stick out on all these cups. This is sped up 4x, but you can see it's just kind of squiggly. I'm losing shielding at that stick out at about 20 CFH. Not very good for stainless steel. Now here I'm using the same exact stick out with the same flow rate with a stubby gas lens. And it's like somebody flipped the switch on. Now all of a sudden it's cleaned up. Now if I put the Jazzy 10 on there with that secondary diffuser, I'm going to get a little bit better shielding. Not like night and day here, but it's still, it's even better. And if I went up to a number 12, it would improve a little bit more. It just depends on what you need and how much gas you want to use. Well, that is a quick rundown on our new improved Arsenal kit. Again, this is the kit for the 17, 18, 26 style. We also have one for 920 style torches. Same cups, just different mounting hardware. If you're still using the old hardware that came with your torch, you're going to notice a huge difference here on steel and stainless steels. If you want to get a closer look, just go to weldmonger.com. Go up to TIG Welding Accessories and then drop down and over here to Furic Arsenal Kits and there they are for the 17, 18, 26 as well as for the 920. Once you open that page up, there's a few other images that kind of clear things up for you and show you what's inside the kit, all the contents and inside the tray right there. And then there's another piece of information here to help you make sure you're getting the right one for your torch. And then all you got to do is add it to the cart.